And in business, the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development has released a report decrying the illicit financial flows from Africa, saying Nigeria accounted for 80% capital flight from West Africa and 46% from the entire continent. The UNCTAD's Economic Development in Africa 2020 report, released on September 29, is titled Tackling Illicit Financial Flows for Sustainable Development in Africa. The report stated that capital flight, which captures trade imbalances and tax evasion, for example, between 2013 and 2015, stood at $88.6 billion on average in Africa, with Nigeria having the largest share of $41 billion, Egypt $17.5 billion, and South Africa $14.1 billion. The report identified corruption and money laundering as some of the other causes of capital flight in the continent, while calling for more government regulations. And joining us now to discuss this is Professor Liu Upong of the Faculty of Business Administration, University of Oyo. It's a pleasure to have you on the news, Professor Upong. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. 80% capital flights from West Africa, 46% from the entire continent. What's the implication of this illicit financial flows and the statistics we're getting from the UN? Uh, well, that is uh, very sad uh, in the sense that uh, at a point like this, we should be expecting capital inflows, not outflow, especially with the very weak recession uh, economy that we are facing. Uh, they have identified you know, uh, the routes, uh, money laundering, uh, improper billings. What that will do to Nigeria is a double whammy. One, it will increase the interest rate of borrowing because Nigeria has become what is seen one is a capital outflow and the riskiness. Now, the riskiness of the country in any investment environment, when the risk is too high, the next thing is the cost of borrowing becomes very high too. So we're going to face a lot of pressure in terms of the market uh, borrowing rates. Second, it's going to affect our economy negatively in the sense that at a period like this, we need more capital inflows, not outflow, uh, into the country. And uh, having uh, the situation of outflow, that means productivity will drop. Of course, we know what it means. You don't manufacture, uh, plants close, unemployment will follow. So it's not a good picture. It's very discouraging. All right, Professor Ukwong, the report identified, just even as you said, corruption and money laundering as some of the causes for this capital outflow uh, from the African continent and Nigeria. So does this nullify uh, the country's touted anti-corruption efforts? Um, well, if the report, the way it is, it, it does. Uh, it, we have the anti uh, uh documents and we have those laws in the books. But some way, what they're telling us, we are not enforcing them. So you might have the laws, you might have everything in place, but you must enforce the laws. Uh, or somehow, there's an external collaboration. It could be. Uh, but however, I, I think with the present regime of Buhari, uh, President Buhari, uh, he has done and preach on how to reduce uh, corruption. But uh, unfortunately, we are not seeing the results. Uh, it seems like uh, we are in the same place or we are getting worse. So the UN report is not incorrect. It's based on the observation and uh, it might be a signal for us to enforce the laws in our books. Hmm. So you're saying that uh, the anti-corruption efforts, you know, is not yielding much results. And the UN 
thinks that uh, signing bilateral agreements will act as a disincentive to the sending of illicit funds from Nigeria to other countries. So do you share this view, considering the fact that we've signed quite a number of these already, and yet we're at 80% culpability? Uh, unfortunately, I'm not sure where they're coming from with that statement. Uh, bilateral agreement means you sign it with between Nigeria and other country in, in, in some multilateral, uh, multiple countries. Now, when you look at the flow of funds, flow of funds usually goes from one point to the other. So I'm not sure how a bilateral agreement would change what we are facing. I think some way with the, the new financial system and the technology, it doesn't matter if invoices, for example, are overbilled and it's bilateral, there will still be capital outflow. If there's a corrupt uh, element in the agreement between country A and country B, or Nigeria and any other country, there will still be uh, outflow of capital. And let me make a note here. What they're looking at is outflow from the Nigerian perspective, Nigerian government, Nigerian investors, not the outflow from foreign investors. Now you can see the situation will get even worse when legally foreign investors pull their investment out of capital, investment capital from Nigeria. If you add that to what they are reporting, it looks very bad. As I said, we have to do, we Nigerians and the government have to do everything to revert that. All right, so this report uh, published by the UN now. Let's, let's really dig into this. Why do you think such reports are necessary and how can we put them into good use? Well, it is uh, like every other report, economic report, a financial report, population, is to uh, pick you to come up with ways to make things better. Uh, the, the report itself, uh, I believe, is, is a fair report. I don't think there's any bias there or inflammation of uh, uh, inflating the report in, uh, against Nigeria. Uh, it is left for us, as you mentioned, to use that, come in, strengthen our internal controls, how funds flow, and to justify that when they flow out, they are uh, uh, justified, you know, they're legal. They are not inflated. Uh, they are not flowing into zero investment. In other words, if you're not buying goods, you're not purchasing capital equipment, then such funds should be stopped. So it puts more pressure on institutions like um, the Central Bank of Nigeria, who handles all these foreign transfers, and the uh, Ministry of Finance. Uh, those two uh, ministries, for example, have to really sit up uh, in terms of uh, controlling outflow and inflow too of funds. Mm. And just uh, finally, before I let you go, Mr. Opan, what in your opinion uh, would you say would be the final solution, if any, to this persistent and nagging issue of illicit financial flows from uh, uh, Nigeria? Um, <laughs> that's a loaded question. Um, the, the, the truth is, uh, there's no mystery in this. Outflow of funds, you know, uh, negative capital outflow is a signal of instability in the country. Somewhere, if you look at politically, uh, we've tried our best, but it seems uh, we, the Nigerians, are not sure that the country is safe. That's the only reason anyone wants to take their phone outside. And of course, the perception outside will be when they see this kind of outflow domestically from Nigerians, they will also hold back on their investment. So we have to put our house together, sincerely. Mm. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Upong, for your time and thoughts on the news. Thank you for having me. Have a nice one. You too. Still ahead is our roundup on entertainment and sports news. We'll be back in just a moment.
Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.